Good day. My name is Stuart Hardy, and today we're going to be taking a brief look at the difference between Zscaler Private Access's Zero Trust service as well as a traditional remote VPN. I work for Accelerate Networks, and we are a proud partner for Zscaler in Africa. So, importantly, let's just touch on what the main principles are in Zero Trust. Zero Trust requires a strict identity verification every single time a company-specific resource is requested. Zero Trust is based on the principles of least privilege, which means you should only be providing access to the resources that your users need to do their jobs. Micro-segmentation is, of course, a further characteristic of Zero Trust in which companies containerize resources and application segments to limit user movement. And lastly, multi-factor authentication extends further identity and access control to include the device, the location, or even the network. So Zero Trust is a holistic approach to application access that provides IT departments with far more visibility and control of the endpoint, the user, and the applications requested. So to, to understand how far we've come and why Zero Trust is very different, let's look at the process of connecting users to networks using a 20-year old age process, which is essentially the Romo VPN. So over here on the diagram, this is a typical hub-and-spoke network. It could be MPLS, it could be even SD-WAN, uh, but it's characterized by generally having one or two centralized internet breakouts, at which point you find the organizational security. So on the left, we have, we have a range of security appliances that protect users from going to the internet and internet-related threats, and on the right-hand side, we have a range of technology that helps organizations securely connect users remote users into their network to access applications, which are sitting at the bottom here. So as you know, uh, when a user is remote, they can connect, uh, typically using IPsec or SSL, via the internet into the stack, probably terminating on a remote access solution or VPN concentrator, and then put on the network um, to get access to applications. And some of the, some of the pitfalls of that solution which really hasn't evolved much in the last 20 years, includes the fact that it's a manual connection and a cumbersome one at that. Importantly, in order to allow users to connect to the network, you have to publish an IP address in order for the VPN to establish, which really exposes your network and creates an attack service. Once the user connects to the network, they're given a LAN IP in order to facilitate that connection, which then allows the user to discover applications, do a port scan, or pretty much move around the network uh, without any real limitations. Uh, typically, this is hardware-based, which uh, obviously the problem with that we've seen recently in scalability issues. So in, in hardware, it's hard to scale up and down rapidly. And very importantly, the visibility and control that you have as, a, as an IT administrator of the endpoint of the user and the application is extremely limited. So one of the biggest issues that, that obviously is faced by IT departments today is that w when applications start moving from your DC into cloud, this old age process is starting to have significant performance challenges. And the main reason for that is unlike before, when you were connecting to the network to get to an application inside the network, you're now forced to connect to a network to applications that actually sit in the cloud. And by doing that, you're adding on a lot more latency, and in a lot of cases, you're going through security processes that are slowing down the application further, and in fact, aren't necessary. So, what we can say is that traditional VPNs aren't aligned to application transformation, and they're not even aligned to network transformation. So, what is a better way of doing this in the future? Or what are we seeing today? Um, before I do that, very quickly, I'm not going to go through this. The same problems and challenges exist, not only for trusted users, but when organizations want to build access for third-party users or for partners. So I'm not going to go through this in detail, but, but what this implies is that everything I'm about to talk about now is actually resolved in this new zero-trust type of world. So the first major thing you, you notice, at least in the Zscaler sense, 
because Zscaler's network is defined by a cloud-native, global, multi-tenanted infrastructure, is that that whole stack of appliances that was in your DC before is actually going to be moved into cloud. Not physically, because this has been built as a multi-tenant environment, but those processes that you had before is actually going to shift into cloud in a zero-trust context. And that means that you can limit the amount of IT overhead that's related to building and scaling and managing physical hardware in your environment. Aside from that, there are three main components to Zscaler's private access solution. The first one is what we call the endpoint agent, which is similar to a VPN endpoint agent, and it sits on the user's machine, but unlike any other security service, this endpoint agent is only responsible for routing traffic from the workstation of the user to the Zscaler private access solution. And that private access broker is the second part of this architecture. That private access broker is literally responsible for connecting users to applications. And we'll talk about that in a bit more detail now. And the third part is what we call the Z connector. And the Z connector's responsibility is exposing private network applications to your private Zscaler broker. So you would have a connector in any environment that is segmented from any other environment where you house applications that you need people to access. So in this case, you have an application connector in your DC and you have an application connector in your private infrastructure as a service, whether it's Azure or AWS or a combination. And that can be just spun up on the App Store within a few minutes. So this environment um, requires you know, it doesn't require, but it uses outbound TLS tunnels to establish connections to the Zscaler private broker. And so each device seamlessly connects to the private broker. And because they're outbound connections, you are starting to reduce the attack service in your environment because you're taking away the requirement to publish IP addresses. So each tunnel is outbound and it's TLS based, which means it's, new, it's more scalable and it's very secure. Uh, and as you see here, all that Zscaler app is doing now is exposing those applications to your ZPA broker. So the process from here is actually very simple. Your user, when he wants to request an application, will click on SAP. That application request will go to your broker. The broker will determine whether that user has the authority to use SAP based on the policies that you've defined. And if the answer to that is yes, then that user will be sent then to the closest application connector to, to stitch that connection together. So if you're running that application in your DC and in cloud, based on the global load balances within Zscaler's global network, it's gonna choose the closest connector to the user and establish that connection. So that, that connection is established on an application by application basis based on, poli uh, based on policy. So this highlights quite a few differences between the remote VPN that we talked about a bit earlier and a zero trust cloud-based access architecture. So we'll go through them very quickly. And these form the basis, of course, of the principles of zero trust. Firstly, every single time a user connects in this environment, they are required to identify themselves uh, based on the company's requirements between authentication, uh, two-factor authentication, and of course, the MFA built into Zscaler. And at an identity level, we, uh, you know, a prerequisite for using zero trust is that the organization we work with has an IDP. And that can be established by the customer having ADFS, Active Directory Federated Services, or AD in Azure, both of which have SAML or use SAML authentication. Or they can use a third party identity provider, and that it can include people like um, Okta or OneLogin or Ping, um, which is API integrated into the Zscaler environment. So, of course, very, very, very strong authentication all the way through to multi-factor authentication when you can enforce a certificate on the device or you can enforce certain parameters like network or location. <coughs> and then, uh, equally important is that you creating policies that limit the users to access resources that are required to do their job. So m major uh, thing to understand here is, unlike a VPN, you're not connecting the user to your network. 
you're connecting the user to Zscaler private access environment, which means you don't get a LAN IP and you can't do a port scan. And instead of connecting a user to a network, you're connecting them only to the applications they need based on policy. So this, in this environment, you can, you can imagine that the speed difference in using applications, not only because it's a seamless action now, but if your user is traveling around the world and is in London, you're not having to trombone a South African-based VPN concentrator to, to get to an application that essentially also sits in London. So the performance of this is massively faster because the Zscaler cloud brokers are built close uh, or almost you know, in line with every single major infrastructure as a service provider on every continent in the world. Of course, some of the other byproducts of this is there are no appliances. Um, these, all these services are software and they can be easily deployed uh, inside your own environments. They're a lightweight Linux image for the Z connectors. So you can spin that up with pretty much any hypervisor within your network. And that means that scaling services up and down can be done literally in seconds. And uh, very importantly, the, the, the visibility and control that you now have between the device, the user, and the application that they want to access is considerably different to what it was before. In fact, so much so that uh, cu customers that we work with use ZPA not only to do asset tracking, but to manage shadow IT because they can now see where the user is coming from and where they're trying to go. And that helps organizations understand um, that movement of users and, and, and frankly discover applications in the network that they didn't even realize they were still using today. So lastly, uh, the major benefits of this environment, not only of speed, is, is a byproduct of being able to migrate applications into cloud easily um, because there's no IP addresses in this environment or this architecture. So quite literally, if you have an application sitting in your DC, you can spin up that application at AWS. You can put a connect in front of it using the load balancing. Your user will connect to the closest application and then you could just switch the one off in your DC and that essentially supports your migration to cloud. Very, very importantly, as we mentioned earlier, whether you're delivering third-party access or partner access, you can do that through the same policy broker. So now instead of having to do things like network segmentation, you can simply give the untrusted users in your organization a Z app for their endpoint devices. You can give them internet access, and then you can build an application segment, and inside that you can house the applications that they're allowed to access. And within a few seconds, they'll be able to connect to applications and they'll never see any other part of your network because they'll never be brought onto the network. So whether you're uh, uh, using an NNI or MPLS interconnect to connect users to networks, that environment now is resolved through one policy broker. So that's just quickly a summary of the difference between Zscaler's private access and a traditional remote VPN. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want more information, go to www.an.ca.za. Thanks a lot.